a family from Texas, uh, a father and young son, just 11 years old, who were there on vacation. Uh, their family, like so many others, are devastated. They're grieving. They need all the love and support of our American family as they grapple with an unimaginable loss and try to get through what are going to be very difficult days. Uh, and so on behalf of all of us, I think, uh, I want to welcome our friend, uh, Ambassador uh, Aro of France, uh, and uh, I had a chance to meet with him uh, right before I came out uh, so that he knew that it's not just the United States of America, but the entire world that stands in solidarity uh, with the people of France during this difficult time. Uh, I spoke to President Hulon earlier today, and, and in addition to conveying deep condolences, uh, I reminded him that France is America's oldest ally and one of our strongest. Uh, we owe our freedom to each other. Uh, Americans and French have stood together for two centuries, and I told President Hulon that we will stand united now uh, in our grief, in our praying for the many who are injured, many of whom are still fighting for their lives, and we pledge to stand with our French friends as we defend our nations against this scourge of terrorism and violence. And this is a threat to all of us. We don't know all the details, but what we know is the capacity of even a single individual to do extraordinary harm to our people, to our way of life. Uh, a lot of nations represented here today have been impacted this year and in previous years. In recent weeks, we've seen heinous attacks inspired or directed by ISIL here in the United States, in Turkey, in Iraq, in Bangladesh, in Saudi Arabia. And these terrorists are targeting and killing innocent people of all backgrounds and all faiths, including Muslims. And I know I speak for all of us when I say that these individuals and these networks are an affront to all of our humanity. Many of the nations that are represented here today are part of our global coalition against ISIL. And I want to take this opportunity to say once more, we will not be deterred. We will not relent. We're going to keep working together to prevent attacks and defend our homeland. We are going to keep taking out ISIL leaders and pushing ISIL back in Syria and Iraq. We're going to keep standing with our partners from Africa to Afghanistan and we are going to destroy this vile terrorist organization. And in contrast to these terrorists who only know how to kill and destroy, we're going to win this fight by building, by never giving up on diplomacy to end the Syrian civil war, by working with partners around the world, including Muslim communities, to push back against hateful ideologies that twist and distort Islam a religion that teaches peace and justice and compassion. We will defeat these ideologies by offering a better vision of development and economic progress so people, especially young people, have more hope and opportunity and are less susceptible to extremism and violence in the first place. And we will continue to promote political opportunity and democracy so citizens have a say in their future. And we will win this fight by staying true to our values, values of pluralism and rule of law and diversity and freedoms like the freedom of religion, freedom of speech and assembly, the very freedoms that the people of Nice were celebrating last night on Bastille Day. In the wake of last night's attacks, We've heard more suggestions that all Muslims in America be targeted, tested for their beliefs, some deported or jailed. And the very suggestion is repugnant and an affront to everything that we stand for as Americans. We cannot give in to fear or turn on each other or sacrifice our way of life. We cannot let ourselves be divided by religion because that's exactly what the terrorists want. We should never do their work for them. And here in the United States, our freedoms, including freedom of religion, 
help keep us strong and safe, and we have to be vigilant and defend our security and our freedoms. And all of us, whatever nations we represent here, uh, I think have to step back and, and reflect on what we are doing uh, to eliminate this kind of chronic violence. It, uh, it's been a difficult several weeks here in the United States, but the, the divide that exists is not between races and ethnicities and religions. It is between people who recognize the common humanity of all people and are willing to build institutions that promote that common humanity, and those who do not. Those who would suggest that somebody is less than them because of their tribe or their ethnicity or their faith or their color. And those impulses exist in all our countries. And those impulses, it, when we do not speak out against them and build strong institutions to protect people from those impulses, they can take over. They can be unleashed so that all of us have responsibilities, not just a few. Uh, I want to say that even as we are relentless against terrorists, uh, it's also worthy for us to recognize that our nations have worked together for security and peace and human dignity around the world. I want to thank so many of your countries for the partnership that we forged the progress that we've achieved together over these past eight years in rescuing the global economy and securing vulnerable nuclear materials, a comprehensive deal to prevent Iran from obtaining a nuclear weapon, halting the spread of Ebola and thereby saving countless lives. In Paris, the most ambitious agreement in history to fight climate change, a new sustainable development set of goals to end extreme poverty, and promote health and education and equality for all people, including women. And through the efforts of many of you, we've continued to try to move beyond old conflicts, supporting the transition to democracy in Burma, forging a new partnership in Vietnam, deepening our new chapter of engagement with the Cuban people, helping to support the efforts in Colombia to end the decades-long conflict. That's the power of diplomacy. That's what's possible when our nations and our peoples work together in the spirit of mutual interest and mutual respect. And what a contrast to the death and nihilism that terrorists offer. What a powerful reminder of the progress and opportunity and hope that we can advance when, as nations and as peoples and as individuals, we refuse to be defined by our differences alone, and we remember that we are all part of one human race. Even on difficult days like this, that's what gives me hope, and that's what should give us all hope. Because on this planet of more than seven billion people, the hatred and the violence of a few ultimately is no match for the love and decency and hard work of people of goodwill and compassion so long as we stand up for those values and so long as we answer uh, those who would undermine uh, those values. Uh, I'm very proud uh, of the work that we've done uh, over these last seven and a half years in partnership with your countries and uh, so long as I have the privilege of being the President of the United States, uh, I will continue to stand alongside you uh, to promote those values uh, all across the world. Thank you very much, everybody. President Obama at a gathering a reception for foreign diplomats using the occasion to give extended comments about the tragedy that happened here in Nice, France last night. 84 people killed when a man driving a truck swerved out of the promenade where people have been gathered to watch fireworks on Bastille Day, a day of celebration, as the president pointed out, of liberty and freedom. 202 people are still hospitalized. 
Many of them are children and many said to be uh, just barely clinging to life, according to the president here. I'm with uh, Bill Neely, uh, NBC's chief global correspondent. Tell us about the suspect, the man killed who was driving the truck. Actually, I've spoken to several people here who saw him. One man tried to stop him. He said he was very agitated, was waving his gun around, and behind him in the truck was a trail of bodies. He's been named as Mohamed Lagouage Bruel. I mean, he was a 31-year-old French citizen born in Tunisia. Uh, had a record, a police record. He was sentenced to six months in jail earlier this year for violence, but that was a suspended sentence. That's why he was here, not in jail. But in, was, any connection to Islamic extremism? That's what. That's the crucial thing. He wasn't known to intelligence services. That's where they're trying. What they're trying to find out. Interestingly, he was born in the town in Tunisia where ISIS gunmen killed 39 people last summer. So they're looking at those links. They want to know: Was he a lone wolf? Was he acting under orders? Did he have accomplices? That's crucial. And we should note that truck, after going r roughly a mile along this stretch and along the promenade, the beach here, came to rest just a short distance down this road when police finally stopped him in a hail of bullets and killed him after, uh, by that point, people had, had run and, and any way they could escape this area. The carnage was beyond belief. Witnesses described people just lying in the street. Uh, baby strollers uh, left where they were as people grabbed their families and ran as quickly as they can. But again, 84 dead, a number of injured. Many of those are said to be in very, very bad shape. We want you to know, of course, have more live here from Nice on NBC Nightly News. Then tonight, a special hour of Dateline dedicated to the attack here in France. That airs at 10 Eastern, 9 Central. I'll join you for that as well. For now, I'm Lester Holt, NBC News, Nice, France.